Hello student, so in this class we will solve some problem uh, using differential evolution. In the last class I have shown you how you can solve a unconstrained problem, so unconstrained problem using differential evolution. In this class we will solve some constraint optimization problem using differential evolution. So we will mainly consider three problems here, the first problem is a minimization problem it is a minimization of f x. So, it is a function of two variable that is your x 1 and x 2 and x 1 minus 2 whole square plus x 2 minus 1 whole square. The unconstrained optimal solution of this problem is uh, 2 and 1, uh, but we have uh, 2 and 1. So, somewhere here. So, this is the unconstrained solution of this particular problem. And, but we have two constraint here that is x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 uh, is less than equal to 0 and x1 x square minus x2 is less than equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the first constraint uh, that is x1 plus x2 minus 2 less than equal to 0 and this is your second constraint that is your x1 square minus x2 less than equal to 0. So, therefore, the solution has to satisfy these two constraints. So, therefore, the constraint optimal solution of this problem is summed here and the solution is 1 1 and the function value is 1 f x. So, we will apply d differential evaluation to solve this problem and we should get this solution that is x star equal to 1 1 and function value at optimal solution is equal to 1. So, this is the first problem we will solve uh, using differential evolution. The second problem is also a minimization problem and the function is 3 x 1 square minus twice x 2 uh, that is the ob that is your objective function. So, and if you minimize if you minimize it, so then you should get solution somewhere here. So, for uh, this range that is x 1 is varying between minus 5 and plus 5 and x 2 is varying between minus 5 and plus 5. But there are two constraints, uh, one is a linear constraint that is your twice x 1 plus x 2 equal to 4. So, this is the linear constraint. So, that is twice x 1 plus x 2 equal to 4 and we have one nonlinear constraint that is x 1 square plus x 2 square less than equal to 19 point. So, this is the constraint that is x 1 square plus x 2 square less than equal to 19.4. Okay. So, if we solve it the constraint solution is minus 0.2. Okay. So, this is somewhere here this is the constraint solution of this problem minus 0.2 and 4.4. So, this is the optimal solution and function value is minus 8.68. Okay. So, this is the function value. So, we will apply d e and try to get this constraint optimal solution of this problem. The third problem is also a minimization problem that is x 1 minus 3 whole square plus x 2 minus 3 whole square. So, therefore, the unconstrained solution is somewhere here and the solution is 3 and 3. So, this is the unconstrained solution that is x star equal to 3 comma 3. Okay. So, you should get this solution, but we have a linear constraint here. So, this is the constraint and this constraint is twice x 1 plus x 2 less than equal to 2 and therefore, the earlier solution is infeasible solution okay. once you are putting this constraint and the, the constraint solution is somewhere here and this solution is minus 2 and 1.6 and function value is 9.8. So, we will apply differential evolution uh, on these three particular problems. So, we will try to solve these three problems using differential evolution and, uh, and we will use R platform. Okay. So, let us see uh, we will try to solve this problem using R. So, I have opened my R studio. So, let us open the file problem 1. So, this is your problem 1 file and so what I need basically I need d optim. So, I am putting required d optim. So, this is the 
library I need, this is the software package uh, I need basically. So, I am putting that one. So, these lines I have written to plot the function. Okay. The function is uh, that is x 1 minus 2 whole square plus x 2 minus 1 whole square. So, this is the function, this is the function of x 1 and x 2. So, let me execute this lines okay so i need de and then this is the function okay and now i have to create the value for x1 and x2 so x1 is varying uh, between minus 5 and plus 5 and i have taken uh, a grid size of 0.1 that means interval of 0.1 so and i have used sequence function so, you can see what is x 1 here. So, this is your x 1 and this is your x 2. So, both are from minus 5 to plus 5 and then uh, I have calculated the z value. So, this is the z value. So, I have used uh, outer function here and so outer x 1, x 2 and f p. So, this is the z value I am calculating at its grid point. So, this is the z and then let us plot the contour. So, contour you can plot. So, this is now z. So, contour I have written x 1, x 2, z. Then number of uh, contours are 100 I put color blue, then level I am putting x 1 and x 2. So, if I executed this particular line, I should get the contour. Okay. So, this is the contour I am getting. And then let me plot the constraint. So, by this line, this is constraint 1. Okay. So, you are getting the constraint 1 and similarly you are getting the constraint 2. Okay. So, optimal solution is somewhere here. So, I have plotted this particular function. So, let me get the unconstrained solution of this particular problem. So, this is the unconstrained function. So, let me execute this one and so this is the constraint function. So, I will discuss this later on, but let us solve the unconstrained uh, problem. So, this is the function for solving the problem. So, here you have to uh, you have to define what is function. So, already I have defined. So, f is this f I have executed. So, therefore, this is the unconstrained function lower bound is minus 5 and minus 5, upper bound is 5 and 5 and I have not defined the other parameters that means I have used the default parameters. Okay. So, let me execute this particular line then okay. so I have executed up to 200 iteration that is the default value of iteration and now let us plot the optimal point. So, optimal solution is somewhere here. So, this is the unconstrained solution of this particular problem. Now, let us define the constraint here. So, this is the constraint function. So, what I am doing here, this is the unconstrained function f 1 and this is the z 1. So, z 1 is x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 and z 2 is x 1 square minus x 2. Now, I have used if else function. So, if, if else that z 1 is less than 0 and z 2 is less than 0 that means constraints are satisfied then f will be your f 1. So, else I am putting a very large number. So, that means I am minimizing uh, this function. So, therefore, I am putting a very large number. Okay. So, this is my constraint function. So, what it will do uh, what this function will give if there is no violation. So, it will give you f 1 or if there is a violation. So, it will uh, f value will be a very large number. So, therefore, that solution will be avoided. So, let us execute this particular function okay. and now I would like to rerun my differential evolution with this constraint function. Okay. So, I got the solution. So, let me plot this. So, you just see now I am getting the constraint solution. So, you can see that. So, I am getting the constraint solution of this particular problem. So, earlier solution was this that is that was the unconstrained uh, your solution of this problem and constraint solution is here. So, I am getting that solution 
and if I would like to see, so I can see the summary of RES. So, you can see that whatever solution I got this is 1 1 and, and function value is 1. So, anyway, so generation is 200 generation and function evaluation is 402. So, I am getting the solution of this particular problem. Okay. So, anyway, so I can handle the constraint within this particular function. Now, let us solve the next problem. So, let me open the next file. So, that is your problem 2. So, here the objective function is 3 x 1 square minus twice x 2. So, this is the objective function. So, I required d of team. So, then let me run this objective function then x 1 and x 2. So, x 1 and x 2 both are varying uh, between minus 5 and plus 5. So, let me generate the value of x 1 and x 2 and then generate the value of z. Okay. So, this is I am I am generating the value of z and then let me plot the contour map plot the contours. Okay. So, if I execute this particular line, so I am getting this contour and as I said that minima of this particular function is somewhere here. So, I can I can plot the constraint now. So, this is the constraint first constraint that is the linear constraint and this is the second constraint and optimal solution is somewhere here. Okay. Now, let us define the objective function. So, objective function here uh, is f 1. So, for solving uh, for using d e. So, I have to define objective function in this order that means x has to be a vector. So, f 1 is 3 x 1 square minus twice x 2. Then z 1 is twice x 1 plus x 2 minus 4. So, this is the linear constraint and z 2 is x 1 square plus x 2 square minus 19.4. Okay. Now, so here also I have used if else function if else the z 1 is less than 0 and z 2 is less than 0. So, in that case it will it will give f 1. So, it will take f 1 that means if constraints are satisfied. So, f value will be equal to f 1 that means objective function value will be f 1 and if it is not satisfied. So, I am putting a very large number that is 1 e to the power 4 in that case. So, that solution will not be selected. So, when you are going for a selection operator. So, this solution will not be selected. Okay. So, let me execute this particular function. Then uh, here uh, I am using the differential evolution and I use the default value only I have defined the lower bound and upper bound. So, lower bound is minus 5, upper bound is plus 5 and plus 5. Uh, so, let me execute this one. Okay. Then I am getting the solution. So, let me plot uh, this solution. Okay. So, I am getting this, this particular solution and I can see the summary. Uh, the base solution is minus 2 and 4.4. So, this is the solution and objective function value is minus 8.68. So, I got the exact solution of this particular problem and you can see that D is quite effective in solving constraint optimization problem also. Okay. So, you will get the constraint optimal solution of the problem and it is quite efficient. So, I can also solve using Z A. Uh, so, if you want whether you are getting this in that case uh, you have to include the Z A library. So, I am not doing that one. Okay. So, I am getting the solution of this second problem. So, you can see that I got this solution. Okay. Solution is on the constraint boundary. Now, let me solve the third problem. So, this is the third problem. So, here again I have plot this particular function. So, let me delete this. Okay, let me clear all the space. So, now this is the objective function. Objective function is x 1 minus 3 whole square plus x 2 minus 3 whole square. So, this is the objective function 
and I am defining x 1 and x 2 and x 1 and x 2 are varying between minus 5 and plus 5. So, let me generate x 1 and x 2 values ok. Then calculate the z values. So, I have used outer function ok. Now, plot the contour. So, this is the function and optimal solution unconstrained solution is somewhere here. Let me plot the constraint function. So, there is only one constraint function and that is a linear constraint. So, I have plotted this one. So, optimal solution is somewhere here at this particular point. Now, let me define the constraint function. So, this is the objective function and the constraint is g 1 equal to twice x 1 plus x 2 minus 2. So, this is the constraint and here also I have used if else function. So, if else that means if there is no violations uh, then this function will return f 1 that means I will take f 1 and if there is a violation. So, in that case I will take a big number just to avoid this particular solution. So, you execute this particular function. So, I have executed that one. Now, I am using d e optim ok. So, again I have used the default values ok, it is done. So, let me plot the points optimal point ok. So, this is the solution of this particular problem. So, I can see the summary of this solution. So, base solution is 0 0.2 and 1.6 that means, this solution is x equal to 0 0.2 and x 1 equal to 0 0.2 and x 2 equal to 1.6 and the function value is 9.8 ok. The function value is 9.8 and generation was 200 generation and function evaluation was done for 402 times ok. So, this is the solution of this particular problem. So, you can see this is the constraint solution of this problem, but if you are solving unconstrained. So, but if you are not considering this constraint, so you should get this particular solution that also you can check. So, I will only use this particular function ok. So, let me check this one. So, this is function x ok. So, let me check this one. So, if I execute this one then I will execute the d optim and then let us plot this one. So, you just see I am getting now I am getting this particular solution ok. So, this is the unconstrained solution of this particular problem and if you are putting the constraint you should get this particular solution. You can see the summary. So, now solution is 3 3 and function value is 0. So, that is this is 3 3 and function value is 0. So, in this class we have solved 3 problem and basically we, we have solved the constraint optimization problem. So, you can apply the same d e. So, d actually you cannot define constraint separately, but in other cases in some other algorithms. So, you can define the constraint separately, but in this case you cannot define it. So, this particular package uh, can handle the unconstrained function. So, therefore, you have to make your function and convert and you have to make your function and convert the constraint optimization problem to an unconstrained optimization problem. So, in this class uh, we have converted it uh, something like that if there is a violation we are putting a very large number because the problem is a minimization type problem and I would like to avoid that solution. So, if there is a violation so I am putting a very large number in order to avoid that solution and if there is no violation so in that case it will consider that particular function value ok. So, let us stop here. So, in the next class we will discuss some other problems. Thank you.